Here's how to make this Apple-inspired text or logo reveal with particles in DaVinci Resolve for free. I'm gonna start from scratch, open my media pool and right click to create a new timeline. Give it a name and uncheck use project settings because over in format, we are going to create a timeline for use on social media. So it'll be a one-to-one -one aspect ratio or in this instance, 1080 by 1080. Click create, jump from your media pool to your effects bin and in effects, we're dragging a fusion composition onto your timeline, stretch that out as long as you want. Then you can just hover over that with your playhead and click this button to open the fusion page. This is the fusion workspace. You have an area for nodes and right now all we have here is one media out node. Whatever we create on the fusion page, will get piped into that and then we'll send it back to the edit page. And we're gonna start by clicking this button to create a text plus node. In this, I am just going to type our sample text. You can do uh, any text or even bring in a logo and use this method. Just be aware if you use a longer string of text, you might run into some issues with perspective, but I'm just gonna type in, hi. We can preview that, great. Scale it up a whole lot. Cool. I'm also gonna click this button to add a background node. And in that background node, I'm gonna pull down the alpha along with this uh, red, green, and blue controls. So this is actually a thoroughly transparent layer and we're gonna start our node tree with this. It's just a good quality of life, keeps things organized, keeps things clean, uh, and you're less likely to run issues if you do it this way. So we have our text, and then what we are going to do, I'm gonna press shift space that will pull up this select tool search bar, and I'm gonna type in erode or dilate that will create this node we're going to pipe our text into that if i preview the erode and dilate and then the inspector pull that up you see it starts to just like uh we are dilating the edges so it is growing out from there then i am creating a blur node i'll preview that i can blur the edges just a little bit it gets a little fuzzy and then watch this i'm going to connect the blur to the background node that will create a merge and then i'm going to take our main text node here and pipe it into the mask input of that merge. Now, that will, by default, just mask it to where the text was originally, but in this merge, if I hop over to settings, I can click apply mask inverted, and now all we have is that little outline, and that's what we want. We will revisit this uh, layout and actually duplicate it and do some fun things later, uh, but for now, I am actually going to create a P emitter node. And like some other nodes in Fusion, uh, the particle system is its own system. Uh, so uh, coming out of that, I need a P render node, and that will allow us to uh, see something of what we're working on here. And because we will be working in 3D coming out of this, I'm just going to create a merge 3D node. And if I preview that, we'll just have this uh, 3D workspace. And hey, we have a little a little ball of particles spawning here. That's cool. And uh, we can control this over here in our particle. And we can do things in uh, an interesting order here. The first thing I'm actually gonna do is come over to style and change this from point to blob. Now, blobs are naturally much larger, so I can come into size controls here, scale this down, and then, yeah, that'll be a much better starting point. Yeah, cool, cool. I'll scale those down quite a bit, actually. And then over in controls, uh, I'm gonna come to the actual first frame of my composition, click number, come forward one frame, click that again, and then just go down to zero. So now it will only spawn these particles at frame zero, and then they will just hold, and then eventually when this lifespan gets up at 100, they will all die. But I can come here, uh, crank up this number to a whole lot. We're gonna go pretty wild off the bat, something like 1200. Yeah, that can be an okay place to start. Now, this lifespan, we're gonna use a little fun expression work. I'm gonna right click on that, go to expression. And in here, I'm going to type in comp uh, lowercase, but then render end caps on both of those plus one. And then now that lifespan, we'll look at the total length of my composition. And I am just adding one because it st does start on frame zero. So it can get a little funky sometimes. But now if we preview this merge, uh, this uh, these uh, little ball of particles here will stay up our entire composition. Great. This is where we start getting fun. In this P emitter, I'm going to come over to region. And that is looking at, okay, we are spawning these particles. How do you want them to spawn? Right now, this is a sphere. So, hey, we have a sphere. But I can change this to bitmap. And if I do that, it'll disappear. Oh, no. But if we look at our P emitter node, it has added an input. So now I can take this merge I have over here and pipe that right into my P emitter node. And now we have this outline text made of particles. Now they are perfectly uh, two dimensional. <laughs> And we are going to address that soon, but this is a great place to start. The other thing to know that in P emitter, in that region setting, 
you do have this channel we wanted to pull from alpha yes but then you also have this uh selection down here if i pull down low now we'll get more of like the blurry areas or where that opacity is fading back but depending on how tight you want this i want this first layer pretty tight but now uh, we can keep getting fun because <laughs> after this p emitter i'm going to create a p custom tool p custom tool wildly wildly powerful and we're just going to use a small small fraction of that and what we're going to use is over here on the particles tab we have a bunch of variables here and you can change these up and it will affect all the particles in your scene but what we want is to come to position z and i am going to type in here rands with an s parentheses negative 0.1 comma 0.1 comma id close parentheses and when I do that, you see, hey, uh, things are all spread out now. But actually, if we zoom back a little bit and rotate our camera just right, hey, that is the effect we want. Um, now, we are instantly dealing with perspective. You see, hey, this doesn't look like an eye, um, but that is because it is not center. And if I move eye perfectly centered, now the H is a little, little off. Uh, but we will get into some camera controls to help with that later. But for now, if you zoom back far enough, yeah, you can see um we ha we have that same eye but now all those particles have depth that is what we want that is all we are going to use this p custom node for but we can hop back to this p emitter and look at some cool customization i'm gonna hop over to style and we selected blob and we looked at size controls but now we're gonna look at color controls and maybe a little maybe a little size as well um the first being that size variance uh this is going to be its starting size but then you add a little size variance and then now, hey, some larger, some smaller. That's pretty cool. And uh, in color controls, you will also have color variants. So if you want a whole lot of blue, uh, that's a spacey thing. Little green, little red, maybe a lot of green, but a lot of blue. Uh, we check that out and yeah, now we have some uh, blue tints in there, but they're not all uniform. But this is already looking great. And now we can look back at this original rig we have over here. I'm just gonna make some room because we are gonna do some cool stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is actually copy and paste this erode through the merge. Paste that. I'm going to drag it up above this main node tree. And then I'm going to paste uh, just another version of that. And I'm going to pipe this text into the exact same places and uh, pipe in this empty background node into both of those merges. And then the text as the mask and the text as the input on the erode. And then now we can start to uh, cycle between these. And this first one will be this uh, really uh, the area closest to the text. So we're actually going to beef up these particles so we have that really well-defined look. And then this next one, what we can actually do uh, is pull up this erode dilate quite a bit. Uh, probably, yeah, just until it's you just barely start to see that. I might not mess with the blur too much. And then we can create uh, another emitter. And to copy over those settings, I'm actually going to copy that current one, paste it, pull in that merge. We'll preview that 3D for fun. And then we're gonna do that one more time for this final merge. And then we have to connect um, all of these uh, P emitters together. And we're gonna do that with just a P merge. So I can connect those. And then I want P uh, another P merge here. Oh, not a normal merge, a P merge. Connect that. Now we have all three of those layers. And you can already see, hey, stuff is changing. But hey, we actually didn't customize that last one. Uh, we want this erode dilate way out here yeah just a just a big old block of what will be stars we can maybe blur that a little bit although that will get uh, clamped by the p emitter node but if we go back and preview that yeah now we have a little bit more of a field again we will uh, mess with the look of this a little bit um, but for now we're going to play some more in this 3d workspace you can see i can pivot around this and from the side yeah looks like a bunch of particles but then you circle around and boom you've got that cut out it looks great and you can even tell that the density is higher right uh, near the text it gets thinner the further you go out and of course you can try to balance these uh, you can pull up uh, the erode dilate on this middle uh, element which will push them a little further out so it might blend just a little bit better and you can always come into these different p emitter nodes uh, change especially the color after the fact if i want like this middle version to have more of a touch of purple to it we can do that and it can look great or even size if i want um, this uh, size variance to be quite a bit bigger on these outside ones. Yeah, not nearly that much though. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Great, let's talk about our 3D scene. We are rendering our particle scene 
uh, as 3D, which you can see I have this output mode selected as 3D here. You could always render right out of a P render node in 2D if you're using that somewhere else in your scene. Uh, but I am taking that right into this merge 3D, which we were using just to preview. But now I'm going to do something pretty interesting, and that is create another merge 3D. And in this merge 3D, I'm going to click this button to add a 3D camera. And then coming out of that, I can finally create a renderer 3D. And that's as far as we're going to go. Uh, we'll add some little flare after this in a bit. But importantly, you will note that that renderer 3D is in this one to one aspect ratio. I can preview those particles. I can preview the second merge, uh, which you can see uh, that is why our camera is right in the middle, which is why we couldn't, whoops, couldn't see those particles. But if I pull this camera back, uh, I'll also hop in and change the focal length to something a little more, uh, a little sharper, something uh, maybe 50. I might bump that, bump that up later. Uh, but if I preview this merge here and pull our renderer 3D, then you can start to see as I pull this camera back, you're finally seeing that main effect. Now, why did I create two merge 3Ds? Well, that main motion of these particles as it rotates around. You can rotate an entire 3D scene using a uh, merge 3D. But if I do that, if I come to the transform options on this merge 3D that has that camera, if I change this Y rotation, you'll see in this viewer, the particles are rotating, but the camera is also rotating. So that is not affecting our output at all. But if we come into this first merge 3D, the only thing coming into that is our particles. So if I rotate that, it is just the particles that are rotating. That looks great. But uh, one issue right off the bat, if I go to 90 degrees, you'll see that this is a little thin for this effect. You want this to feel more like a field, uh, more, the star field, and not so, not so slicey. But we can go right back into our P custom node and change this from uh, negative uh, 0.1 to 1 uh, to negative 0.2 to 0.2. Now, uh, I didn't explain this, uh, but you might have <laughs> seen what this actually actually did. So this is saying, uh, Rans, this just means random. So it is saying, hey, randomly distribute all these particles uh, between this Z value and this Z value. And the uh, comma ID just means on a per particle basis. If you do this some other ways, then these particles uh, will actually move to a new random position every frame. We don't want that but this keeps their motion still and just randomly distributes them in this way. And you can see this fills out the frame much more nicely. So now we can actually work on a bit of our animation. I'm coming to frame zero and on the Smurge 3D, I am setting a keyframe at exactly 90. Then I can come forward a little bit and I'm gonna bring this all the way down to about two. And you can see here, you can, uh, you can make out that text and at any time, you can always bounce back. I'm coming to this first P emitter node, and I am going to crank uh, this starting number all the way up. I'll, I'll double for now, 2400. So now when we do rotate around, that high is a little more clearly defined. Uh, but back on that P merge, I'm going to come forward quite a bit. And here, shift this just here from 2 to about negative 2. And you can even see as I get there, yeah, maybe like negative four without, nah, not that much. We still want it somewhat legible when you get to that end. And then I'm just gonna, from that point, come forward about the same amount we had at the beginning and take this all the way to negative 90. Great. So we'll adjust uh, this animation curve in a bit, but you can see it starts from the side, rotates around, and yeah, you have this nice slow movement as it goes in and then boom, whips around. And we can refine this moment in our spline viewer. Love the spline viewer. Uh, I will check that uh, parameter we have a keyframe on, click this button to zoom to fit. And hey, this is our move. I'm gonna start by selecting all of those and click F to flatten. And we're gonna do some very interesting things. The first, on these middle two, uh, I'm gonna select those, zoom in a little bit, and actually, uh, though it did perfectly flatten those, but I do want some motion. So I'm going to pull those and just tweak those just a hair so that they are not perfectly uh, flat, but it retains a little bit of that motion. And then on this first keyframe, or the first one of this long uh, hold, I'm going to select that, click T uh, to pull up these easing controls. And I'm going to pull up this ease in to something pretty extreme, probably like 80. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing on the ease out for this one, that will give us a nice ease in and then a uh, long time to pick up as well. 
and then uh, we're gonna look at these two because these this is where the whip is gonna happen. So I did flatten this, but actually I'm gonna take this handle and pull it down, almost straight down, but just try to match this curve of the line now. Uh, we don't want any easing on this because what we can then do is select all of these and come down here to this one, set loop. I will select that and check this out. It will start at 90 degrees. It will whip around. You'll see that high. It'll slowly move around. And then when it starts to pick up speed and whip around, when it is exactly at 90 degrees, it will be teleported back to, uh, or rather when it is at exactly negative 90 degrees, it will be teleported instantly back to 90 degrees and perform that same move over again. So now you have an awesome looping animation. You could even uh, stack these in different way and alternate what this text says. You've got tons of options. And I think the only thing I'm gonna do uh, coming out of here is just go to that renderer node, uh, pull over my media node, and I'm just going to add in a nice soft glow. And then actually, uh, for our own benefit, comp that over a black background and pipe that right back into our media out, which we can preview. And then now that glow is looking great. And it swings around. You see your text. You have this nice subtle movement. And then it picks up, ramps back around to reveal itself. And you can hop back to the edit page, let it cache. Uh, you see it is playing real nice. Particles can get intense, but all things considered, we are not using that many particles in the scene. Uh, there is one more cool thing I want to show you. I'll hop back into Fusion, and it isn't too extreme now, but sometimes, especially on this outer edge, you can get pretty hard lines. If I look at this, uh, it is pretty boxy around this outside edge. But what I can do is coming into this erode and dilate, I can click this button, to create a fast noise node and make that mask that erode and dilate. So now you see instead of that solid white layer, um, we have a bit of gradient here and that will be uh, influencing uh, that P emitter uh, region control here. So uh, I will preview a few different things at once. I'll preview that erode dilate on my first viewer and actually my media out on the second viewer. And you can see, wow, uh, it's already changed things quite a bit because this corner over here is darker. It's effectively cut out a lot of the particles going to that area. But if I pull up the scale and yeah, contrast just a little bit, let it do its thing. You see, oh, okay. Now uh, it is only spawning these particles in the brighter areas of this scene. So this is something uh, you can go and balance. If you want a little bit more of a random look, uh, you can make that happen. But when you've got something you like, Hop right back to the edit page, let it cache, let it do its thing, and you have this really cool, unique look. Um, that looks, yeah, pretty, pretty close to something we saw uh, in the run-up to the recent Apple event. Looking really cool, all for free, in Resolve.